Hello, and welcome to learning about how to install and configure the Uyala module for Drupal. This video is going to show you how to install the module, create a video content type, upload a video, and an example of saving custom metadata for an asset. The first step is to make sure you have an Uyala account. If you don't have an Uyala account, browse to uyala.com slash try Uyala and fill out the form to create a trial account. We need an Uyala account for the Uyala Drupal module to connect to. So if you don't have an account, make sure you do this step first. This video is not going to show you how to do a basic Drupal site install, but it, there are other videos available which will show you how to do that if you've never installed Drupal before. Once you have a basic Drupal installation set up, we will need to download and install several modules and libraries that are used to support the Uyala module. First, let's take a look at the Drupal modules we need. First, and most importantly, we need the Uyala module for Drupal. This is the module which actually connects to the Uyala service and creates the Uyala field type that we can attach to content types. The Uyala module has several dependencies depending on what you are using it for. If you are not using it to upload videos and are solely going to be uploading videos through the backlot, you can skip some of these dependencies, namely the ones that are not dependent for the Uyala uploader module to be enabled. But most sites, we are going to want to upload videos, so let's download those dependencies and get them out of the way. First, we need the Chaos Tools Suite, or C-Tools, which almost all Drupal sites will have since key modules like Views and Panels depend on it. We will need jQuery Update to get the latest version of jQuery into our Drupal 7 site. We will need the Libraries API module to allow us to connect to the Uyala Web Loop Uploader JavaScript Uploader widget, which Uyala has provided for us to actually upload videos to Uyala. Finally, we will need the Services module, which allows the Uyala Web Uploader to communicate with Drupal. As I just mentioned, we will actually need the Uyala Web Uploader. This project is available on GitHub and is actually totally separate from Drupal itself. So if you're using Uyala with any other content management systems, this can be used to integrate with those systems. Once we have downloaded and extracted all of the Drupal modules to Sites All Modules and the Uyala Web Uploader Library to Sites All Libraries, we can turn on the Uyala module within Drupal. Click on Modules to view the list of modules that are available to turn on. If they have been extracted correctly, we will see that there is an Uyala section with a series of different modules that can be enabled. We're going to enable the Uyala module as well as the Uyala uploader module to allow uploading of videos. Scroll to the bottom of the page and click Save. If all of the dependencies that we have needed have been successfully extracted into the right locations, this screen will tell us that they will be enabled. Otherwise, an error will be thrown telling you to go and get the missing modules. Click Continue. We can see now, if we go back to the Uyala module section that both modules have been enabled, as well as the modules that they require. Our next step is to configure the Uyala module with our account credentials. Go to the configuration section and then look under media on the left hand side. A new menu entry, Uyala settings, will be available. Click on that and while that loads, we're going to go to the back lot and go to the account tab. From the account tab, click on developers and you will see on the left hand side your API keys. Copy and paste the v2 API keys into the Uyala settings form. Start with the API key, and then place the API secret. Scroll to the bottom and click Save. The Uyala module will verify the authenticity of your credentials, and we will see this message. That the Uyala servers have been contacted, and your partner and secret code have been confirmed. Now our Drupal site can talk to Uyala, but our Uyala API cannot talk to Drupal. If we want to enable this functionality, we can place our site URL in the API ping URL ending in Uyala slash ping. Note that this will only work if your Drupal site is accessible from the public internet. So if you're working on your local machine, 
you might just want to leave this blank until you have a public copy of your site available. Without the ping URL properly working, Uyala will not be able to tell your Drupal site when videos have been finished processing and when they should be marked as published. Going back to our Drupal site, we now need to create a content type and a field on the content type to attach videos to. Click on Structure, and then click on Content Types. Now, click on Add Content Type. We're going to call this content type Video, and we're going to describe it for our site users. We don't need to change any of the other default settings, but we can if we like. For an example, we can turn comments on and off or decide how previews or different fields are supposed to be displayed. I'm going to leave them at the default, though I'm going to click on Save and Add Fields. The first thing that we should do is change the body field to be plain text only. The body field will be synchronized with Uyala so that the body text can be used as the description of the video within the Flash player. Since the description is going to be used in the Flash player, it doesn't support HTML at all. We can edit the field by clicking on Edit and changing text processing to plain text. Save those settings, and now we're back at the original video content type page. Time to add a video field to the video content type. I'm going to add a new field and call it video. We need to select the type of data we're going to store, so we select Uyala. Finally, we have two different widgets that we can choose. The Uyala embed code widget is best for developers as it allows them to uh, attach a new Yala video to an entity without having to use the full uploader in the case of where the backlot only and the Uyala API are being used to manage assets. But for a website where we are uploading videos, we should choose the Uyala uploader widget. I'm going to select that and click Save. There are no field settings, so we can save the field. And for the video content type, we probably want the video field to be required, so I'm going to check that off and save. We have now created a video field on the video content type. Let's upload a video to the Uyala backlot through Drupal. I'm going to go back to the home page and click on Add New Content. I can select Video, where I'm presented with a form that is very similar to the article content type. I'm going to select a title for the video, and I can put in a body if I'd like. Below, we can see our video field, and I can click on Browse to select a video to upload. I'm going to select an old video from our archives that showed how to create a CVS release of a Drupal module. Once you've selected the asset to upload, click Upload. Now that the upload is complete, we can save our node. The video will display, but a placeholder will be shown until the content has been processed into a format appropriate for embedding in a web browser. This is usually completed within a few minutes, depending on the length of the video. We're going to move ahead with showing how to add custom metadata to a video while this video is processing. What I'm going to show in this screencast is the end result of an example module for saving the season and episode number for an asset. The nice thing about Uyala's custom metadata is that it is completely custom and is only limited by the fact that it is key value pairs. So while this is a very specific example that might or might not match your use case, be aware that you or any other Drupal developer can either use the Uyala API directly to manage custom metadata or combine it with the Drupal API to expose that metadata as additional fields to edit. We're going to go back to the modules page and scroll down to the Uyala section. From here, we can check off Uyala app episode to enable the example module. Save the module configuration, and now the example module is enabled. Let's go back to the video that we previously uploaded. We can click through. And we can see that it's finished processing and is available to play. But let's go take a look at the new metadata that we've enabled. Click on Edit. 
and scroll down to the video field. We can now see that there is an episode ID field which we can enter a value for. Because this is within Drupal, we can do any validation or changes to the field before we save it as custom metadata within Drupal. I'm going to say that this is season one, episode one. And I'm going to save this. Now the custom metadata has been saved and we can see it if we go back to the edit tab. Likewise, if we go to the back lot and load our asset, we can see the custom metadata stored in the custom metadata tab. Take a look at the Uyala episode.module file for further documentation and examples about how to customize the metadata stored with your assets. Thanks for watching, and stay tuned for more videos about integrating the Uyala module with views and taxonomy.